a common question we get on the Rive Discord channel is what's the best way to add a Rive button to your app or game so that some application action is performed when the button is pressed. And depending on your use case, there's actually a few different ways that you can do this. So let's explore those and you can see which one will work best for you. We'll take a look at this simple example. And if we animate this, you can see that as we hover over the button, it triggers a hovering state and we can remove the hover and we also have a pressed. And these inputs over here, they control the state machine, which determines which animation to play. We're not gonna go into detail for this in this video. What we want to focus on are these inputs. So as an example, if we set the hovering input to true, you can see a hovering animation is playing and same for pressed. And if we take a look at these listeners, these listeners are defined in the editor. And as an example, in on hover enter, if we take a look at what's happening, you can see that when we are entering the hovering state, then we set the hovering input to true. So that's the quick overview of this animation. And we'll take a look at this at runtime and see the different ways that we can incorporate this artboard as a button. To get the animation file, you can go over to share, download for runtime. And I've already started off with an example project and we will be using React to explore the different ways that you can add a button. But please note that the same principles apply to all of Rive's runtimes. So you don't have to worry about the commented code for now. We'll be uncommenting these and exploring them as we take a look at the alternative approaches. For now, all we want is just to simply render the button. And if we take a look at the animation, it's exactly the same as what we had in the editor. We can click it and on hover, it changes the background color. So as a proof of concept, what we'll do is we'll output something to the console when the button is pressed. And the easiest way to do this is by simply adding a on-click event handler to the whole canvas. So in React, what we do is we use the use Rive hook, which retrieves the Rive component. And this is created by specifying the source file, the state machine that you wanna play, and we're setting autoplay to be true. And then down below, here we are returning the Rive component. And as an example, if we wanted to, we can simply add an onclick handler. And this onclick will call this function, which passes, uh, the button pressed uh, string to the console.log. And if we take a look at our console and just restart the app, you can see now when we press, we get some outputs to the console. And if we want to take this a step further, we can go into our styles.css and I'm just gonna uncomment this line, which adds a pointer cursor to the Rive container. And the Rive container is a wrapper div over the uh, Rive component. So if we refresh this now, you can see as we hover over the canvas element, uh, it's actually changing the cursor. But you'll also notice that it changes the cursor even when we're not actually hovering over the button. And that is because it's a on-click handler and the cursor is changing for the entire canvas element that Rive creates. To illustrate this, if we go back into styles, and I just changed the background color, you can see that we're actually adding a click event to the entire element over here. And that's not exactly what we want. For one, we're not seeing the animation play anymore if we click outside of the button. And as well, it's um, changing the cursor earlier than when, what we wanted to. So the first thing that we can do to improve this is we can handle the listeners ourselves. So I'm just gonna change the color back and in our app.js file, I'm going to uncomment these. So now we're adding uh, on mouse down, on mouse up, on mouse enter and on mouse leave events to our uh, components. And for this, what we'll need to do is actually set the inputs ourselves. So if we take a look at our animation, 
what we want to do is we want to set the pressing inputs and the hovering inputs. And we also want to disable our arrive listeners from uh, doing the default. So these listeners that are defined in the editor, we don't actually want to trigger them. So in our animation, we'll set should disable arrive listeners to be true. And we'll also find our inputs. So pressing and hovering. So this is the pressing inputs and hovering inputs. And these we can set to true and false. And if we scroll down, that is exactly what we're doing. In on mouse down, we're setting pressing to be true. And on mouse up, pressing false. And same for on mouse enter, on mouse leave, where we're setting hovering to true and false. So if we restart this, you can now see that we still have the same hovering behavior. And we can click our button. And if we click our button outside of the area, and if we're hovering outside of the actual shape of the button, it is still doing the hovering, hovering action. And you can also perform the click. So this is already better, but we can improve this even more. What we actually want is we want to be sure that the hovering state is only showing when we are hovering in the shape, meaning the cursor only updates, and we can only click inside of this shape. And to accomplish that, we're gonna go back to what we had at the very start. So I'm gonna uncomment or comment all of these again. And we are gonna disable this so that our listeners work. And in our style sheet, we are also going to disable the pointer for the mouse cursor. So this is what we had in the beginning. Our button pressed is still working. And that is because we also want to remove this on click listener. And everything is now back to what it was before. To illustrate what we'll do for the next section, we're gonna go back into the editor. And I'm just gonna zoom out slightly. And you'll see that we have some events defined at the top here. We have a on click event, on hover enter, and on hover exit. And events are a way for you to report information that happens in the animation to your runtime. So as an example, if we play our animation and we trigger the enter state, you can see the on hover enter event fired. If we exit, on hover exit is triggered, as you can see over here by the animation playing. And the same is true when you click. You can also see that these events are reported in the console. If we take a look at our listeners, as an example on hover enter, you'll see that on hover enter, we report the on hover enter event. And these events are very flexible. You can also add properties that have, for example, number, boolean, or string uh, values. For this example, we don't need any properties. We're just going to be looking at the actual names of these events. Similar to on hover enter, we are reporting the relevant events in the correct listener. So if we go back to our code, what we'll do now is we'll listen to this event. So I'm just gonna uncomment the following code, not these. What we're doing is we're creating this on arrive event receive method. And we are listening to all of our arrive events and then calling that method. So each time our state machine receives an event, this particular method will be triggered. And within this method, we are receiving a arrive event, which has data attached to it. And that data has a name. And that name is what we defined in the editor. You also have properties. But as I mentioned, we won't be using that in this uh, scenario. So now if we refresh our application, you can see that our mouse cursor is updating. And if we press the button, we also get a console log output. You also note that the cursor only changes when you enter that shape. So now it is exactly what we want it to be. And if we look at the code, you can see that it is now being controlled by these events. So when we receive an event of on hover enter, we set the cursor to have a pointer. Exit, we set the cursor to be auto. And if we receive an on-click event, we call the on-click method. 
And just like that, we have exactly what we want using Rive Events. And that is basically that. Uh, those are three different ways that you can add a Rive animation as a button to your app. If you want to see a different example using Rive Events, you can take a look at this example we made. Here you can see we have uh, buttons that are a bit more unique. And as you can see, there are also a number of different buttons on the Rive animation. So that means with events, you can incorporate as many buttons as needed from a single animation and perform the needed uh, application action that is desired. You can also do things such as uh, triggering sound events, or for example, in this application, when we start the demo, you'll see that there's some HTML components that only show when the animation is complete. And those are also triggered through a Rive event. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want more information on Rive events or the Rive state machine, take a look at our runtime documentation. You'll also find runtime specific information depending on your uh, preferred platform. Take a look at the runtime event section and the state machine section to cover similar topics discussed in this video. And as always, we can't wait to see what you create.